Do you remember the film Battleship, where the USS Missouri drops an anchor and appears to perform a handbrake turn? Well, there's a boatload of artistic license in use there, and the reality of anchoring large ships is somewhat different. Let's use this modern anchor as an example. It's a stockless or patent anchor and comprises the shank and the flukes. It gets its name because it doesn't have the stock that you would find on earlier anchors. This part here is the stock which was used to keep the flukes pointing straight down into the seabed. The stockless anchor just uses a spread at the end of the flukes to stop it laying the wrong way. It lays flat and when force is applied, the flukes bury themselves into the seabed. The seabed itself is critical to any anchoring procedure. Specifically, we're concerned about the nature of the seabed. Solid rock is pretty much useless. Apply force on an anchor resting on solid rock and it's just gonna slide along. Seaweed can have the same effect, creating a mat that the anchor just glides over. Swap the weed out for pebbles or sand, however, and the anchor has a much easier time digging in. For the very best holding power, what you really want is something like soft mud, anything that makes the bottom nice and sticky. Not only is the anchor itself going to dig in nicely, but the chain leading towards the anchor is going to get a good grip as well. That part is critical, because surprisingly, with massive ships, it's not actually the anchor that holds them in place, it's the weight of the chain. The anchor is simply there to hold the end of the chain in position. It allows the chain to lay flat along the seabed before rising up to the ship. In this diagram, there's no force on the ship at all and the anchor chain is just going straight down, running along the seabed to the anchor. We actually call it up and down and it tells us that the ship is quite happy, not applying any weight to the anchor chain. If the wind or current starts to tug the ship backwards, the chain stretches out. As it starts to move, we get lightweight, which increases through medium weight to heavy weight. These are all terms that the crew use to describe how the anchor chain looks, so that the bridge team know how much force the ship is applying to the cable. So, with the chain under heavy weight, you can see that it's stretched out at quite an angle. The anchor itself is just keeping the end of the chain in position, and the sheer weight of the chain is what's keeping the ship in position. The curve that the chain makes is called a catenary. It's a physics term that describes the curve made when a chain or a cable is suspended by its ends. As you apply more force pulling the ends apart, the catenary becomes straighter. It's absorbing the energy that you're putting into it. As soon as you stop applying the force, the chain falls back to its natural resting position. So, when the wind and the current ease, the ship stops applying force to the chain and it falls back to its natural resting position, laying straight along the seabed and vertically up to the ship. If there's a sudden sharp tug on the ship, it doesn't snatch tight on the anchor chain. The chain gently lifts a bit straighter, absorbing the energy of that sharp tug. If the catenary wasn't there and all the weight was on the anchor alone, the sharp tug would likely break it free from the seabed. This is where the length of anchor chain becomes so important. If you let out a relatively short length, the anchor will bed down, but there'll be barely any scope left for absorbing any energy before the ship's applying force directly to the anchor itself. If instead you let out lots of chain, it's going to take a huge force to pull it tight before breaking the anchor free. But if it takes so much force to pull the anchor free, how can the ship ever get its anchor back? Well, when the ship isn't applying force to the chain, the windlass on the forecastle can quite easily start to heave. The ship uses its main engines to drive towards the anchor as she heaves. Eventually, she'll be in position directly above the anchor, continuing to heave on the chain. The end of the shank lifts, levering the flukes out of the seabed. The anchor is away. Now it's just a case of continuing to heave until the anchor returns home, with the shank safely inside the hawse pipe. Within the hawse pipe, there are powerful jets of water to wash the anchor chain as it's brought home. When you see water running out of a ship near the anchor, that's all it is, just the anchor washer running. Following the anchor chain into the ship, we can see the machinery at work. The chain leads up the hawse pipe, over the windlass, down the spurling pipe and into the chain locker. Within the chain locker, it's attached to the ship at the bitter end. Now did you notice these markings along the chain itself? Those are used to indicate the length of the anchor chain. Anchor chains are produced in lengths of 90 feet or 27.4 meters. The lengths are joined together by joining shackles. Each joining shackle is painted red, indicating the joint. Then white links are painted on either side of the joining shackle, indicating how many shackles it is from the anchor. The first will have one white link either side, then two white links, three white links, and so on. It's an easy way for officers to know how many shackles are out. 
In this diagram, there are five shackles at the waterline, so there's 137 metres of anchor chain in the water. As we saw earlier, the more chain you have out, the better the holding power you can expect. So going back to the film we saw at the beginning, hopefully you can now imagine what would happen in reality. You can pay out the anchor chain and maybe at some point it will get a grip on the seabed. The chain will pull tight, absorbing more and more energy the whole time. Then one of two things will happen. Either it's going to absorb enough energy that the ship will come to a gentle stop. Or, more likely, it will absorb some energy, then the chain will pull too tight and the anchor will jump out of the seabed and start bouncing along. The ship would literally be dragging her anchor. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Apologies for the delay since the last one. I'm hoping to be better this coming year and aiming to publish monthly now on the last Friday of the month. Either way, to stay up to date whenever I post new content, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Until next time, thank you for watching. And goodbye.